the Fantex Evolve shift, it really could have been epic, and I truly believe that. In fact, I believe that with just a few adjustments, Fantex could have snatched up a significant portion of the small form factor case market. So in this admittedly very late but still relevant review, we'll go over design, build quality, CPU and GPU thermals, and of course, how it could have been so much better. So the big thing that makes this case unique is that vertical back-to-back -back layout, which has your motherboard on the left side, your GPU on the right side, and your power supply underneath. Now, I said this before with the Dan A4 and the Ryzen Tech of Fine review, but I'm a really big fan of this layout for ITX builds. And at least on the exterior, I personally think that the Evolve Shift is one of the best looking cases on the market, full stop. It really has that professional workstation minimal look that I like. You get these clean looking front and rear aluminium panels which have a soft matte finish and there's tempered glass on both sides with black perimeters, no thumb screws and a really solid mechanism for mounting and removing. This sort of build quality in the realm of ITX cases is just unseen at this price of 100 US dollars and I actually managed to pick this one up for 100 dollars Australian so you might get lucky with a deal like I did. The case feet are low profile and follow the edge of the case and they can actually be repositioned to either side of the case to accommodate a horizontal layout. This might be good for home theater setups for example, but for workstation and gaming setups, I would definitely recommend the vertical orientation for that smaller overall footprint. And the small footprint is what makes this case so interesting in my opinion, as although it is above the 20 liter threshold to be truly called a small form factor case, its footprint is only slightly bigger than that of the Ghost S1 and is actually smaller than the N-Case M1. Motherboard orientation is horizontal with the IO facing upwards. There is a cutout in the rear panel for your cables to exit, however as other reviewers have shown, it's best to run your cables behind the panel and then out the bottom. A riser cable end bracket is included which is definitely appreciated at this price as those things are not cheap. The graphics card bracket can also slide on that top rail allowing you to clear the SFX or SFX L power supply that is mounted below. You can also position your graphics card face facing outwards if you do manage to stretch the riser cable that far, although I would recommend just leaving it how it is. There's room for two 2.5 inch drives at the rear of the case positioned just behind the motherboard, or you could mount a single 3.5 inch drive here instead. And as I said before, we're good for SFX and SFX L power supplies here. Cables will be facing up and are in plain sight, so custom sleeve cables are recommended. Okay, so everything so far has been outstanding for the Evolve Shift, and to Fantex credit, they have done an outstanding job on building a really unique vertical ITX tower for the small form factor case market. The problem is when we start to talk about cooling performance and you start to realize how unoptimized the internal layout for this case actually is. So for fans, we've got room for a bottom mounted 120 or 140 millimeter fan, but only enough room for a 120 mil radiator. And at the front, we've got room for two 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans, but again, only enough room for a single 120 mil AIO here as well at the bottom. At 22 liters of volume, this just isn't that great in my opinion and the part where it gets a bit frustrating from a case design perspective is that making room for a 240 or even a 280 millimeter radiator would not have been that hard and I believe it could be done just by reorganizing the internal layout seeing as there is already enough room for two 140 millimeter fans at the front all we need is an additional 30 millimeters of clearance to fit up to a 30 millimeter radiator this could easily have been done by relocating the drive base from behind the motherboard to the bottom of the case shifting the motherboard back 30 millimeters and simply redesigning that new motherboard tray and internal frame to accommodate the radiator. Of course, this would get rid of the bottom radiator slot, but it's well worth the trade-off in my opinion. If Fantex would have done this, we would be getting an insanely premium case with exceptional radiator support and most of all, at a really good price of around 100 US dollars. If they had done that, they would have snatched up a significant portion of the ITX and small form factor case market like that. Now, as we'll soon see, you can actually get by with these CPU thermals with a 120 mil AIO in the bottom in push-pull. You can run an 8700K at stock with pretty decent temps. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but by far the biggest problem with the Fantex Evolve Shift and why I personally refuse to run my air-cooled system in it is the GPU thermals. Now, with the GPU, the current design has the card basically pushed right up against the back of that motherboard, pretty much making that card suffocate and thermal throttle if your room temps are not in check. 
Again, Fantex could have fixed this by allowing more room between the graphics card and the back of the motherboard by moving the motherboard closer to that left side panel. This would reduce the CPU caller height from the current 80 millimeters, which is way too tall for AIO focused cases anyway, and then allocate the extra breathing room for the GPU. To give you some perspective, I tested with a 1080 Ti SC2 at stock settings, and the thermals here are just truly unacceptable when compared to other small form factor cases. CPU thermals with an i5-8400 are on the better end of the stack and is only beaten by the water-cooled and case M1. And with a delitted 8700K at stock settings, we do leave quite a bit of headroom for overclocking. Again, CPU thermals here are not too bad, although they could be way better with a 240 or 280mm AIO if Fantex chose to truly optimize this case. It's the GPU thermals that disappoint me the most here. And no matter how you position the fans in this case, those GPU thermals are pretty much doomed to hell. Keep in mind that we're testing here with an ambient room temperature of just 20 degrees C, so if your current environment is 25 C or higher, you're easily venturing into GPU throttling territory at that point. Even with the side panels off, there's basically no difference to the GPU thermals as the card is suffocating directly behind that motherboard. CPU thermals didn't change much here either when adjusting the number of fans or their orientation, and in fact it seems like the hot air from the 120mm radiator has a hard time exiting the case once you start adding in more fans. So those thermal results are disappointing for sure because this case really is beautiful. Being able to see your components from every single angle is awesome, but I just can't recommend it if you're planning on air cooling your GPU. A custom loop or dual AIO build, however, is something that I can recommend, so let me know down below if you'd like to see that built and tested in the future. Build quality is great, design is solid, price is reasonable, but I just feel like Fantex got a bit lazy in terms of the internal layout and optimization. Especially when it comes to air-cooled GPUs, there's absolutely no way I'm letting my 1080 Ti cook there at above 80 degrees C. So guys, those are my thoughts on the Fantex Evolve Shift, which you guys have been asking me about, and those GPU thermals are just kind of unacceptable. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts down below on the Evolve Shift, and since the case has been out for quite a while, uh, those who do have the case, let me know down below how you're managing with those CPU and GPU thermals, and if anyone has done a custom loop in this build, I'd also love to check that out. As always guys, huge thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below because we are looking at that Ghost S1 in just a couple days, I promise. And I will see you all in the next one.